2020, when it comes to technology, is an amazing time to be alive. Technology is now at a level that would be unfathomable to our grandparents when they were young. In a matter of seconds, we can be connected to our cousins on the other side of the world through handheld devices that we all use on a daily basis. Going above and beyond what a conventional telephone could once offer us, today we have access to a multitude of apps on our smartphones to help make our lives easier. Making it easier than ever to stay connected, our smartphones are an undeniable part of our everyday activities. Nonetheless, have you ever stopped to think if we are really the ones using them? What if they were the ones using us? We are living in an age of high-tech surveillance, and some of these Big Brother-style practices have become extremely unethical. You may think you can escape such tracking by simply putting your phone in airplane mode or switching it off, but you would be wrong. Smartphones today continue to work as though they are recording every moment of your life, tracking every movement you make. Once you start using a smartphone, you are instantly part of this global surveillance game. Many people believe that it is only our data which is being exploited, but it is far worse than that. It is actually us, the people, that are being exploited. And what kind of information can they get from my phone, for example? Uh, everything in your contacts list, every uh, SMS message that you use, every place that's ever been, where the phone is physically located. Even if you've got GPS disabled because they can see which wireless access points are near you, every part of a private life today is found on someone's phone. We used to say a man's home is his castle. Today, a man's phone is his castle. Many mobile carriers and network providers are using a surveillance process based on the usage of the International Mobile Equipment Identity, also known as IMEI. They also look at the International Mobile Subscriber Identity, known as IMSI. These are essentially codes that help to determine every single solitary movement that you make whenever you have your phone near you. Both IMEI and IMSI codes represent the identification numbers that your own, unique smartphone and SIM card has. These strategies are very much encouraged by the fact that nowadays people are far more likely to use their mobile device than they are a laptop computer or desktop computer. It is easier than ever before to get your own personal, handheld computer out of your pocket and quickly type something you need into a search engine, read a result, and continue with your day. You can even do it on the move. Just 15 years ago, you would need to reach your destination, switch on a desktop or laptop computer, connect to the internet, and search for what you wanted. Further to this, just 25 years ago, you may have needed to visit a library or consult a book to find the information you required. Remember encyclopedias? Your smartphone is considerably more convenient. Your phone is constantly connected to the nearest cellular tower. Each time you use your device, your activity is being monitored through the radio frequency waves transmitted to that particular cellular tower. It would be easy to think that this only happens when the smartphone is switched on. But things are actually a lot more complex than that. So your primary threat is the fact that your phone is constantly squawking to these cell phone towers It's doing all of these things because we leave our phones in a state that is constantly on. You're constantly connected, right? Uh, airplane mode uh, doesn't even turn off Wi-Fi really anymore. It just turns off the cellular modem. And the central problem with smartphone use today is you have no idea what the hell it's doing at any given time. Like the phone has the screen off. You don't know what it's connected to. You don't know how frequently it's doing it. As the radio waves transmitted are invisible, you cannot see that your device is still working, even when it is switched off. This means that it continuously sends data about your location and your activity to cellular towers through the unique identification numbers we made reference to earlier. The IMEI and the IMSI mean that even if your device is switched off and not in use, whenever you are carrying your smartphone, a record is being made about your presence in a certain location at a specific time. Collecting data in advance in the hope that it may be of use in the future, this information is utilized by companies to create their bulk collections of data, thus establishing mass surveillance of a sizable portion of the population. So is there a way to stop this? Mass surveillance is too complicated to block it entirely. While we can all shut off our phones when we want, how can you tell if your device is completely turned off? A few years ago, 
you may have been able to remove the battery from your device. But today, most smartphones on the market come with a non-removable battery. Another approach could be to make a conscious effort to reduce the damage mass surveillance could cause you as an individual. You could try to use your smartphone in different ways. For example, using a virtual private network, more commonly known as a VPN, will encrypt and anonymize your online movements. You could also use encrypted chat apps such as iMessage, Viber, or WhatsApp, which hide your messages and pictures so you are not capturable by surveillance programs. Most phones today also have a global positioning satellite, GPS, which are often accurate to within a few feet of your location at any time. You can turn this off, but by doing so, some of your other functionalities on your mobile device that rely on your location, such as a weather app, may not work properly. You could also turn your phone off and place it into a Faraday pouch. But this will completely block cell signals altogether, and you will not be able to make or receive calls. We need to understand that there is an entire industry built on processing all of our data. This means that you have no idea what the apps you have downloaded onto your phone are actually doing with the data you provide when setting up certain accounts. You will often be presented with a box to check or uncheck when agreeing to the terms and conditions of installing the application. But what if you do not agree? Well, it's pretty simple. If you are not in agreement, you cannot have an account. Whether it is a Facebook profile you want to set up or any other mobile application. It is this conditioning that so many smartphone users have had to succumb to in recent years to have access to certain online services that we are becoming ever more dependent on. When you sign up for Facebook, you sign up uh, for terms of service. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Okay. It says, the terms govern your use of Facebook and the products, features, apps, services, technology, software we offer, Facebook's products or products, except where we expressly state that separate terms and not these apply. I'm a lawyer, I have no idea what that means. But when you look at terms of service, this is what you get. Do you think the average consumer understands what they're signing up for? I don't think that the average person likely reads that whole document. Lacking somewhat in transparency, the process of gathering our personal information is so complex, it is difficult to see what is actually happening when using a smartphone. The device you hold in your hand is so smart. It represents the bridge between you as the user and the corporations and governments. In order to have the right to use the online services that everyone is so reliant on these days, you need to provide free access across that bridge to your personal data. This data is collected and used without you knowing a single thing about it. You are being conditioned to use your phone that you paid for with money that you worked for by following certain rules so that you can become the main source of profit for those that need it. All of this data you inevitably end up creating becomes someone else's possession because all of the records about you are no longer your own. Once you have put a little tick into the accepting terms and conditions box, you are giving all of your information away to be used in whichever way profit hunters need to use it. In other words, you are essentially agreeing that your phone is free to spy on you at any time of the day or night.